So the recent explosion of the meteorite over Russia and the flyby, the February flyby of asteroid DA14 showed us that potentially hazardous asteroids aren't science fiction. Indeed, we live in, we're surrounded by rowdy asteroids and we're in a cosmic shooting gallery. So how do we find these asteroids before they find us? Ross focused on what to do to deflect them. I'm going to talk about finding them. So every night, telescopes run by amateur astronomers or robotic astronomers open up and they look for moving objects. And so the orbits of these asteroids are computed and we see if they've already been discovered or if they're a satellite and these, then there's some uncertainty in the orbit. Is this object going to come hit us? And it's really hard with optical telescopes to know for sure because optical telescopes can't uh, measure the motion of the asteroid moving away from us or towards us. So this is where radar comes in. So Arecibo Observatory isn't just home to James Bond supervillains or Jodie Foster from Contact. It's also home to the world's most sensitive planetary radar system and the most powerful. So radar works by sending out powerful pulses of light at asteroids in space and then listening for the echoes with a very sensitive receiver. And so once the echoes are received, you're able to figure out exactly how far away with precision and accuracy these asteroids are. So you can use that information to say, oh my goodness, this rock is bent on a collision course with Earth. What do we do? So to figure out what to do about an asteroid, you have to figure out what it's made of. So a lot of asteroids look like space potatoes, lumpy, oblong, but they don't necessarily have barcodes on them from Trader Joe's saying this is a russet potato from Idaho. So what you do is you take your optical telescope or your radar and you point it at the asteroid and you say, aha, it's lumpy, it's brown, it has craters. But I'm not going to talk about space asteroids. No, they're space potatoes. They're not that exciting. Really, I want to talk to you about space avocados. Now, space avocados are a much more interesting problem because they're a lot like the most dangerous asteroids that are shiny and dark. They're metallic. So what happens if a shiny, dark, metallic asteroid is going to come hit Earth and make the Earth holy into guacamole? That would be a problem. <laughs> so what you have to do, you can't send Brent Bruce Willis up there with a drill bit. He's going to be unable to drill through the asteroid. That would be a big problem. So what you do, like Ross said, is you take an asteroid, you put it next to, or a spacecraft, put it next to the asteroid, have it nudge the asteroid out of the way, or you even paint it white. So it's really exciting living in the 21st century and knowing that it's no longer science fiction to be able to deflect these asteroids. It's science reality, and we can protect the Earth, the only planet we know of that can grow avocados. Thank you. <laughs> If anyone wants to take this off me later, I don't eat nightshades, so if you're going to eat it, please come find me. <laughs> Excellent. Judges. You hit the paint at white with 30 seconds to go. Explain the paint at white for people. Explain the paint at white. Okay. So we hit asteroids with radar. Even though it's 20 terawatts, that's a lot of watts, it doesn't affect the asteroid because we're hitting it for a really short duration of time. But sunlight shines on these asteroids for millions of years, and it actually affects the orbit of the asteroid. So if that's the sun and I'm the asteroid and I'm going along like this, the sunlight could move the orbit of the asteroid a little further out. But that process could take millions of years, thousands of years. That's too slow to defend Earth from a killer space avocado. So what you can do is you can paint half of the asteroid white, and that way it would be a lot more reflective, and it would reflect those photons from the sun a lot more effectively, and that way it would affect the orbit much more quickly. Because we all know if you've been on the beach on a hot day, you're getting off the beach, you do not want to walk across the concrete on the parking lot. You're going to burn your feet and get blisters. I did that once. It was terrible. I couldn't walk for a week. You're going to walk on the white painted lines of the parking lot. So just like that, you paint your asteroid white. It's going to affect how it reflects light, and it will change its orbit just that more quickly. 